All right, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? So, today, review time again, baby. No, not review. Well, ish. I want to go over, for anybody who watched my video last, I want to go over the manifestation thing real fast again. But I want to go over the whole Wiccan Reed thing first is talking about. But I want to connect it to New Age, Love and Light, sucking on fucking unicorn fucking horns, I guess, or cocks and fucking love and light fucking people thinking hippie shit is the way to go nowadays, but they weren't in the hippie age and known that, yeah, the hippies might have been saying make love, not war, but they also fought. They also fucking went out there and actually held their own. They didn't have the internet back then. When they wanted something, they had to get in groups and, and go and fight something together. And go to Woodstock and put up a fucking, you know, they had to fucking put up a fuss to do this shit, you know? Not like us, we think we're fucking social justice warriors, we think we're just warriors, period, and we just sit at home on the internet fucking talking shit online. We think that's fucking fighting the good fights. I'm not even fighting shit. Even using your platform to motivate people it is a step in the right direction. It definitely is better than what most people are doing, but it's still not fighting the good fight. All you're doing is trying to tell people to go do something that you're not even doing yourself. So, fuck off with that shit. But, nonetheless, right now I'm at Chio, and this is in a hospital for for children, and I'm never a big fan of coming here. Being an empathic person, I feel the heartbreak of parents finding out that their children have diseases and shit that they can't beat. And it's very, very, very hard for me. Hence why I'm in the bargain lot. Um, because of COVID, they have a rule that only one parent can go in with a child. That's my oldest we're here for, my 15-year-old. Um, he was diagnosed with being epileptic three years ago now, three Christmases ago. Well, this Christmas would be the third Christmas. So it's really like two years ago right now. But yeah, like a week before Christmas, found out he was epileptic. And that's how I found out that, you know, in Franz Barden's book, where it talks about magical training to breathe through your skin I found that was legit by talking to a doctor here who was talking about my son can't go near water because if he has a seizure his body starts breathing through his skin for some reason the lungs stop doing their thing and somehow the body gets this oxygen maybe that happens through the lungs I don't know I didn't look into it I just I was dumbfounded by that but point is right now if I have issues and trouble speaking that's why but yeah, but I'm in the parking lot right now because it's too hard to be inside and have to talk about this. Or have to, like I said, they only wanted one parent in there. I'm babbling, aren't I? It's terrible. Fuck, man. I haven't made a video in so long. And make one yesterday with 12 minutes of me talking and the rest of it is just birches. Older videos that have a wealth of information in it that is very helpful to people. But anyways, so I want to go over today the manifestation thing I talked about yesterday. How you can use that, how it's practical, and how, you know, why is that important to know? Because in all honesty, if you know the part about having to get um, information in your subconscious mind, really that's all you need to know. So why is it important to know what I told you yesterday? Well, it's not. I was just bragging. Because most people don't even know that. Most people have no fucking idea how it actually works and truth be told I didn't know until recently enough too that when I saw a purchase thing that I knew that well this is how it works everything everything in the physical has its counterpart on the astral and like right now in the astral me and my wife are together therefore in this plane we're together and everything on the astral like in the astral me and my wife are together forever therefore in this plane we're together forever but on that plane, a few years from now, maybe I don't have this vehicle, maybe I have a bigger truck, or a bigger SUV, or maybe, you know, point is, whatever happens there happens here, and what we do as magicians and witches, we take our sigils, we take our spells, we take our candles, whatever we use, whatever is our, our sympathetic link to creating what we want, we stare at it, we visualize we put so much energy into what we want to manifest that we create it on the astral plane but if you don't get rid of the um, if it's a sigil for example you put so much energy into that sigil you create it on the astral plane well if you don't get rid of your representation here your physical representation which is your sigil 
you don't burn that bitch if you don't you know chop it off eat it swallow it put it in the ground whatever and then it won't manifest because technically you have the representation in the in the astral and then you have this representation here so as long as you keep that representation it cannot manifest so then if you have a sigil that you're putting around your house for your friends and family to see to help you manifest if you have a sigil that you put on let's say your episodes or your website or whatever and it's for people to see to give energy to then how are you you're saying that I have to take that down and burn it at some point yep that's exactly what I'm saying because here's the way it works the reason you have it out there right now is to gain energy so everybody's mind the energy adds to it sorry there's a helicopter up there it looks pretty sick alright so uh, this is pretty recent. This is today, August 31st, I believe. That's the date. Anyways, um, so what you just saw was me at Chio. Fucking, I don't know, Friday of last week? Thursday of last week. Holy shit. Um, so, but after this, at some point, you're going to see a video about me talking about, like, my current situation with my wife and all that. So, um, I think it's only about six minutes long. So, if it comes in between magical speakings talkings whatever please don't just like turn off the video and say oh this fucking guy selling all his problems here and one of those problems i want to know how to do fucking magic well but it's a warning i wanted to give all right so uh, this is pretty recent this is today august 31st i believe that's the date anyways um so what you just saw was me at chio fucking I don't know, Friday of last week? Thursday of last week. Holy shit. Um, so, but after this, at some point, you're going to see a video about me talking about, like, my current situation with my wife and all that. So, um, I think it's only about six minutes long. So, if it comes in between magical speakings, talkings, whatever, please don't just, like, turn off the video and say, oh, this fucking guy selling all his problems here. And one of those problems, I want to know how to do fucking magic. Well, but it's a warning. I wanted to give, it's a warning, I wanted to give everyone that's doing this. Because if your partner, like Helene, doesn't necessarily believe in magic all that much, then you might risk the same thing. Because if they start thinking you're crazy or you don't know what you're doing, like, that was the one thing that kind of fucked me up is because my wife would start saying stuff like, oh, we got to be positive about this, don't we? And, well, why are you saying that? You didn't say the things you say happen? And you're saying the opposite of what you want to happen, you know? So, she throw these little things out there like that and thinking, like, fuck, she's on the same page as me. She's coming around. But it wasn't deep enough in her subconscious. These things are just in her conscious mind that she consciously knows but not necessarily believes in her heart, right? But anyways, so, the sigil magic thing or the manifesting period, you have to give whatever you want to manifest so much energy that it is created on the astral plane now i was talking about this previously in the video or in the clip <laughs> you watch it before this these are all clips and i put them all together in iMovie and then add them up so it doesn't matter like if i'm recording fuck up or the camera shuts off well i just add all these little clips sometimes you're like 30 seconds sometimes you're a minute long sometimes you're 10 minutes long and iMovie does the rest basically just merges them all together in this non-stop fashion and it's pretty cool. And I saw, I, was, I would suggest everybody who's got an iPhone to start recording and then transfer your clips into iMovie. I put all your clips at the beginning or add to them and detach your audio from it and a whole bunch of cool things. It makes um, this shit pretty easy. Um, pretty flawless for editing and mixing shit up. Now, I don't script my fucking videos. And I have a main idea and I just let the fucking thoughts come to me. Get them out of me. But anyways, so... The main premise I'm trying to talk about is how magic really works. You know, this whole subconscious, habits, affirmation, all that shit is legit. It's real. That's how this shit works. It really is. But there's a different way of looking at it. The more magical way of looking at it is there's this astral plane, which is also connected to the collective 
unconscious, if you will, or consciousness, whichever one you choose is the one you want to talk about. But we have a collective unconscious where all our minds are all connected. This is where we are all connected. Our conscious minds are not connected. All our conscious minds are our identities, are our egos, and that is what is, is separate. That is a part of a separate. See, people say there's this illusion that we're all separate, but we're all really one. And as, as that is true, it's also untrue. Because we do have separation, and that is our egos, our identities, our conscious mind is what separates us, which allows us to all experience a different reality simultaneously. But our subconscious minds, our unconscious, sorry, our subconscious mind is connected via this collective unconscious, which means my reality is connected to my wife's reality, which her reality is connected to fucking Donald Trump's reality. He's connected to the Prime Minister of Britain and Canada and every low life drug dealer, every motherfucker in jail, everybody who's passed on, everybody in the futures to come, everybody all the same time are linked. This is why if the media shows a picture of what the world is and it gets in enough people's minds, well that affects the entire world. Likewise, when the entire world is scared and doesn't know what to do and doesn't really understand what COVID may be or are unsure whether to believe it or think it's just more fucking, uh, shit, what's the word? Anyway, it's just more fucking um, deception by the media and exploitation of, you know, we got this disease that killed people with weak immune systems. Well, let's change that into a global pandemic so we can make money off gloves and masks and we can maybe potentially get rid of the whole, you know, give a bunch of people a bunch of CERB benefit or whatever it's called in your country or state or province. Um, the money you get whenever you're not working uh, for COVID. And let's just let everybody and anybody grab that money. And even if they fucking are technically doing fraud. Let's not make any repercussions. Let everybody's bank accounts get a little bigger. And yeah, our bank account will go down. But technically, the government gets it all in the end anyways. Because everything you have, everything you make, everything you get gets taxed. And then when you go to the store with the money you left over from your check, you pay taxes. And then even the store with your money that you just bought shit has to give taxes. This is why when you do illegal things like drugs, cigarettes, selling them, like the smuggling, for example, you hurt paying taxes is one of the main things. And then they add the whole icing on top of, uh, you know, illegal substance or whatever. But it's like cigarettes are an illegal substance. It's, it's a legal substance, same with alcohol. But if you're caught smuggling alcohol or cigarettes, you get in less trouble than drugs because it's not a controlled substance, blah, 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 blah. It's just you're evading the taxes. You don't have a business license to sell that. You don't have a commercial transport license, whatever, to move product. And, you know, but anyways. Fucking where the fuck was I going with all that? <laughs> but anyways, so we're all connected. All our unconscious minds are fucking connected. Or subconscious minds are all connected. It's also linked to the divine. It's not just connected to each other. It's connected to whatever you want to call is God or goddess or all that is or the universe or mother nature, whoever you want. Technically, to me, mother nature is a separate entity than the all. It They are the same, just like we are the same, but we're a different place on this hierarchy, if you will. Probably a bad word to say because people are like, oh, he's talking about hierarchies. Fuck this guy. Well, what do you think it is when there's fucking planets above us that control the shit that happens in our body? What it, What is it when there's trees and plants that can't do anything? They have to be grown by us or cut down by us or nature does it for them like naturally and all that. But once it's cut down, they don't really. Anyways, point is there's animals, there's plant life, there's insects, there's all these little microorganisms there's us on the top and then there's things above us that we can't see which is probably a good thing because we'd probably try to control and become above that but <laughs> so there is this hierarchy to life and this is why i say I, gaia mother earth this this big blue and green ball that is either flat or not a ball at all or is floating around the sun which doesn't matter either one to me doesn't change my existence but is 
on this hierarchy, probably higher than us, but, you know, like the seven planets control things in her body. Anyways, point is, she is connected to the all, but is not the all. Just like, we're connected to the all, but we're not the all. Just like everything around me is connected to the all, but is not the all. It's not all inclusive. It's like when I said it initially, magic, the hermetic principles is magic, but magic is not only the hermetic principles, meaning there's other things outside the hermetic principles. The same with hypnosis, same with NLP, same with, you know, anything that has to do with this shit. New Age. New Age is, if you do it right, is a type of magic. If you do it right. If you just don't do it right and you're just being deceived by Christians that want you to get nowhere or whatever, then you're just fucked. But it's, it's a part of what magic could be, but it's not magic. It's magic to me is simply life it's simply you putting stuff in your subconscious for it to um, manifest but technically the reason why other things can work okay so we have our principles and we have affirmations and ritual magic okay ritual magic i've been saying for a while now is the shortcut i've been telling people that ritual magic is the fucking shortcut so affirmations work affirmations is basically using the habit part of your mind so if you have habits built inside your head okay things that you've been doing repetitively since you were a kid well they've got stuck in your head and now that manifests all the time that could be everything from a workout routine or like your morning routine or a fucking drug habit or the fact that you can't make past a certain amount or that no matter what you do, you always lose your job because you can't get along with people. All of these things are habits that have been formed inside your subconscious mind from a young age, from watching either your parents or by you actually physically doing these things. These are all habits, patterns that have been formed inside your subconscious mind that you're going to keep playing out. The way to change that, or one way to change that, and it's the longer way, but it works, is to replace one habit with a new habit. Because nothing can be in there. Because if you just remove, I always use the drug um, example, but if you just remove, remove your gambling addiction, your drug addiction, your food addiction, your porn addiction, your shopping addiction, if you just remove that and you don't put anything in its place, well, nature will refill that spot, your mind, your subconscious, your body. It has to have something there. You think of it as you have... A hard drive basically in your mind and it has to be full all the time with all these habits as soon as you remove a habit it's like okay what the fuck we do well we're gonna put what's been there before if he's not gonna put anything else in but the way to replace it is you remove that and you put in a new habit there and this way there's nothing to default back to its original setting basically it's one way to say it and this is where what i'm talking about in the astral plane this is where this stuff comes in Okay, so when you put enough energy into something, you can now create it on the astral plane. You know, down here, if you were staring at a sigil to put that onto the astral plane, then if you keep that sigil, your shit won't manifest. Because technically, that sigil is a statement saying, I have $5,000. And you put so much energy to that, and now on the astral plane, it says, I have $5,000. Nice. He's got it. We don't have to do anything. You burn that fucking sigil, and now you created that hole I was just talking about. But on the astral plane, there's no hole. It says you have $5,000. And on this mundane level, well, you just got rid of that, so now you don't have the $5,000. So it's going to give you that $5,000 so it matches up. The problem I was just talking about with habits is whenever you remove a habit from yourself here on the physical plane, but you haven't removed it on the astral plane. It's still up there that you are addicted to cooking. You're addicted to shopping. You're addicted to whatever. Therefore, you can fight it as long as you want. But eventually, you're going to have that addiction come back. That's how this works in the reverse. Everybody's doing this regardless if they want to mention it or not. So this is why the habit and affirmation route does work. But if you're just trying to add affirmations and you're not removing something, I believe you can do that. I believe you can. I think it's easier, though. I think it's always easier and this is if I had a course, this is what I would teach. I think it's always best to remove something, remove a programming that you know, or remove a habit that you know, that you're well aware of, that you don't want anymore. You remove that with the thing you want. This way you don't have to get up extra space in your mind and whatever else. I think it's easier. Because I think you can add, you can add a bunch of shit, but I think 
it's faster, easier, and works a hell of a lot better if you remove something and add something. Because if you just add something, you know what I mean? Anyways, if you get it on the astral, you're fine. Because if, if as long as you add something and it goes to the astral, see, this is kind of like above my fucking magical pay grade right now. Like, I'm something I haven't thought about and don't really have an opinion of. If I really think about it, maybe it'll come to me. So maybe I'll expand that. But I, one thing I wanted to correct is when I said in the future on the astral plane, maybe I have a different car. And so when that happens, then I'll get this. But I don't believe that's how it works. Once again... This is my speculation of this. Now, I know the whole, what you put on the astral comes into the physical. I know that's solid. I know that's the truth. I know that works. I know that's something you can bank on. Whereas the future timeline up in the astral, I don't think it's real. I think the astral is always just present time. I think it's always, and the reason it forms and goes throughout time as if there is a future is because you're continuously manifesting. So the habits you have in your mind that you put in there are continuously being reaffirmed by the things you say, the things you do, the patterns and the routines you do every day make up the next day astral shit from coming in. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a continuous loop, a cycle, a circle. So you say stuff from the physical, put energy into it, it goes into the astral, the astral filters it back down to the physical, and you just keep doing this loop. So when you train, change what you do here on the physical, and you put enough energy into it, it changes what goes on in the astral. But the astral is like the default programming that you got right now. All the things that you're doing and destined to do is all in the present right now today. This is why changing your present changes your future. But it's a continuous cycle. But I wanted to correct that because I don't think there's a timeline up there. I don't think it's linear. I don't think that's how it works at all. I think it's simply, if you're saying stuff like, I'm never going to be rich, well, then you're never going to be fucking rich. You're going to be in that bad loop. And if you're trying to put in programming that you get and you're getting five thousand dollars yet you're saying i'm never going to be rich and never going to be rich well if you're emotional um emotional fuck, how would i say that if you think getting five thousand dollars is becoming rich but that's associated those emotions are associated with the same thing vibrations and thoughts then you will not manifest that five thousand dollars now, if you think it's possible for someone who's never going to be rich to manifest $5,000, then you might be able to do it. But most people would think of that as, ooh, ooh we got some money now. And they kind of have the same emotional signature, I guess is the only way I could put it, for those things, right? Happiness, being rich. And then happiness is being rich. Getting $5,000 would make me happy. Being happy would make me rich. See, that's all has the same emotional signature, vibration, hurts. You know, that's why frequency is so important. But it has the same frequency, hertz, vibrational. So when you're in a certain state, you can draw that shit to you. But if you're saying throughout your day, because it's not going to be in a happy vibration, you say, I'm never going to be rich. But if you're saying throughout your day that I'm free from money, free from money, I'm free from money, I'm free from money all the fucking time. Well, you're going to be in a lower state, first of all, so you can't attract that, that up, which is a higher vibrational state. And more importantly than that, you're just, you're affirming that you're never going to have riches. So and then you're trying to get this riches and then you're going to go say magic is bullshit. It's like, well, no, you're doing it completely fucking wrong. You think the things you say all day have nothing to do with anything, but I hate to tell you, the things you say all day have everything to do with everything I fucking talk about. It's probably the most important thing that you can take away from this is if you change the way you talk, speak, write, right now, you'll change your life. This is why there's an initiation phase in the Kabbalah and Great Worker Self Transformation curriculum that I do. This is why for six to six months to a year, you are doing the silence training, you're doing all these exercises and rituals that are built and created simply to protect you, to banish all the bad energy, to get you to stop doing negative self-talk, to depolarize so you don't fucking think that you know it all and no one else knows anything, so that you don't you're you're good and bad spectrum is bigger anyways but that was one of the main things i wanted to say about the whole sigil magic um or sorry the whole astral thing and that's going to be important later because once again ritual magic is the shortcut to the affirmation magical route so anything you do with habits to get something in your subconscious mind is going to take some time i think the shortest number is 21 days and that's if you do the same thing every day day in and day out 
for 21 fucking days and you do it often within those days probably like two 210 times would probably be the best number a day to say your affirmations but it might even be 2100 which funnily enough ends up being a three right and three is a pretty powerful number right but point is the 21 days the first three after doing it 210 times in that day another three 33 right master number um you will get it in your subconscious mind but it has to be that much it has to be at least that much but the shortcut to that is ritual magic well why is ritual magic the shortcut well because when you create that circle around you within your mind using your imagination you see that circle of maybe it's blue fire coming out of your right hand when you begin Okay, always do that. Your right hand when you begin, and then you work up to the autonomy. And if you can't feel and picture and see that protection, purple, blue, whatever color you want, just simply white is fine too, or gold. But a ring of fire around you, this is up to the practitioner. I, I personally think you're going to have books that tell you what, how exactly to do it, but that's just to fuck you up if you don't do it. So, But if you can't feel the energy coming out of your autonomy, this is why it has to be all metal as well, because... You know, it doesn't really go through plastic or rubber handles, right? If you do have a plastic or rubber handle and you like the thaw made, my suggestion is to put your two fingers on the blade then. So the two fingers are where you would project initially around yourself. You're in the physical. You're actually moving in a circle and you're projecting that energy out of your hand. After you do that so many times, you actually see it. You don't even have to fucking think about it. When I do it, I close my eyes and when I, I do it in my head as well, right? I'll be laying on the couch, but I'll be in a whole other realm. I'll be up in my temple doing my thing and then I'm in the astral, right? But it just happens. Like, I don't even have to say it or anymore. Like, okay, I'm circling this. So I'm making my really press circle of protection. My Saturn circle of protection. I don't even have to say that shit. It just... I have always done it three times, too. I like circle three times. And then I make my circle. And then I kind of put a line across. Or like that. To, like, close it. And there's this fucking... The whole circle goes up around me. Circles around me. Straight up. And then when I do the Kabbalistic cross, I get huge up in the astral. And this is why this is a shortcut because you are doing it within your mind your mind has the mental plane which is connected to the astral plane it's kind of like how the subconscious is all linked to the divine while the mental plane our imagination which is our subconscious so it's basically the same thing but our mental capacity capability using our thoughts with our imagination you know in our head you visualization that is your path that is your connection to the astral plane so if you keep practicing for the six months, all you're doing is practicing these rituals twice a day, using your imagination to go into the astral. Well, you're connecting yourself to the astral. This is the same astral that you want to put enough energy into a thought of, I want five thousand dollars, or I have that. I am. I am grateful. I have five thousand dollars. I am is a great way to start. You don't have to use I am once you get to a certain point. But I think everybody who's starting, who's trying to uh, make stuff come to them, always use I am. And using gratitude to me is one of the best ways. So I'm always, I am grateful, because it's present tense, that I receive, that received, not is going to receive, but I receive, present tense, $5,000, whatever else, however you want to finish it, but... The point is, you're trying to put that into the astral plane. And for 6 to 12 months, all you did was project yourself into the astral plane. So big that it's so easy to draw anything to you. Because you're bigger than the fucking planet. You're bigger than the fucking sun. You're bigger than everything. You're up there, so you can draw anything to you. But you are using the power of concentration and visualization and your imagination all simultaneously. And this is how you connect to the astral plane. You know, all this stuff about astral travel and all that. I don't know if it's true or not. I don't know if you can go travel and float around the astral. But I know mentally, in visualiz visualization and shit like that, I totally can. I can picture myself out there doing my thing. But I hear people like Freighter talking about his first astral travel experience. So I know there's something to that talk. Point is, stop trying to do that. Start somewhere smaller. Part of the first, the neophyte grade is also learning how to concentrate, learning how to sit down and quiet your mind. Because everybody is bombarded all the time with all these fucking sound bites and advertising and subliminal bullshit. That's not what most people think it is. You know, so they, some people tend to think to go to the extreme that there's such subliminal 
messages, messaging and stuff that it's literally like putting triggers in you that they can just make a sound. And because of all the subliminal programming you have, you're going to go snap and go kill people. And in my experience, that's not the case. But I'm not saying that's not possible. I don't know. But in my case, the subliminal messaging we're getting is to feel inadequate so we can buy stuff so we get a sense of adequacy. Meaning, you see stuff on TV with families having cars, two cars, fucking picket fence, beautiful house and all that. And subconsciously, you think that's going to bring you happiness. So then you work your ass off to get that. And you're like 30 or 40, you finally get that. And lo and behold, you're not happy. You were happy when you were chasing that dream because that's how the mind works. It releases endorphins whenever you set up a goal and you start achieving that goal. That's why it's always fun before Christmas. But then when Christmas comes, it's like, well, it's kind of a waste of money. It's fun preparing for your wedding. But then after you paid the twenty five to $40,000, it's like, we did that all for one day. It's because that's how the mind works. I'm not even going to get into that. I got many videos on how the releasing of endorphins is the same as the heroin high, which is why heroin is so addictive. And that's all your painkillers. I'm not even going to get into that shit, but just know I know a whole lot about that. And I've talked a whole lot about that. But that's why it's funner preparing for stuff and getting ready for an event than the actual event most of the time. Not always. There are some things that work out that way. Like you get ready for sex. And you might even, for guys, you might even be more nervous than you are um, um, happy and getting release of endorphins. But then you have the sex that's pretty damn good. So, But then you ejaculate and then it's all over so but point i'm trying to get at is fuck i don't even know how i got onto that man i hate when that happens but i guess what i'm trying to say is the six to twelve months that you are practicing this art of oh yeah art of concentration sorry um when you first start with this it doesn't tell you to empty your mind and just keep emptying it even though that's valid and works because you're only focusing on doing one thing and that's how you gotta look at it if you ever tried that meditation of emptying your mind and just letting stuff come to you and every time you notice that you're thinking about stuff you can empty it again whatever you need to focus on the fact that emptying your mind is your job it's the one thing you need to do because you can't do nothing and if you're trying to do nothing you're just gonna fall asleep or you're gonna get bored and mad at yourself so when it comes to meditation, if you're struggling, just practice either the way I started was point on the wall or one subject, one topic, one something. Okay, maybe not a subject because it's too big, but like that dot on the wall. I'm just going to stare at that dot. I'm going to think about that dot, only about that dot. How'd that dot get there? Focus solely on that dot. Or if you want to do the other one, you focus solely on keeping nothing in your mind. The only thing you're keeping in your mind is the fact that you're emptying your mind. You have to have something there or else it's not going to work. I'm telling you. I mean, for me anyways, maybe people are different, but most people that I know that say, no, 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 I can do it. I did it. When I ask them questions about actual meditation and feelings and different things and things that I've verified with other people that I know have done it, they have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about. So they're just running their fucking mouth. But that's just my experience. And maybe, you know, like I said, I have this ability to point out frauds and I, I may not always be right or completely accurate, but it's served me well, man. But anyways, um, yeah, this is the art of concentration. And it's important to be able to concentrate on one thing at one time. People want to multitask and, and think about 10 things at once, but they don't accomplish the damn thing. Being able to do one thing at a time correctly, focusing on one thing at a time, being able to stop all this noise in your mind. Being able to turn off the TV and walk away from it and not feel bad or get rid of Facebook and not feel bad and shit like that. It's so freeing and, and, and you know, to not be like, oh, I need to be like everybody else. Oh, if I don't have this, I'm, I'm a loser. To not have that is freeing. But more important than that, your mind is such a powerful tool that the reason that you can't control your thoughts is because that's done probably by design. Because if people can control their thoughts, they can control their life. And there would be no need for all the taxation and government. And I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not someone who tends to go around saying the government is evil. I think everything has an evil side to it. And everything has a good side to it. And the government is no exception. Like I said before, they, the CPP and the Canadian Pension Plan and all the retirement plans that we have set up in Canada. And like our healthcare system and all that. 
is all paid for from taxes. And there is a certain amount of order that comes with people in the window. There are police out there to make sure that people don't just go wherever they want, grab guns and start robbing people. You know what I mean? So there's a certain amount of good aspects of those things, but there's also a lot of ugly, bad aspects of those things. So there's nothing that's really good, but technically we shouldn't need someone to govern us. But I think the model we have in place right now is a derivative of something that we needed before we were more civilized. When it was more chaotic. This came about and it helped fix things so innocent people weren't dying or getting killed or raped or, uh, you know, injured, shit like that. But now we've forgotten it. We don't need that anymore. Most people want to do good just to do good. I'm sure there's still the odd person, but a lot of people are doing bad because they were treated bad and people were treated bad by their parents or whatever because their parents were broke and were on drugs and couldn't do any better. So it's this perpetuating cycle that if those parents had better conditions and didn't live in squalor and all this shit, would they have treated their kids bad, you know? If their parents before them weren't there. So, we, anyways, way off the topic. Fuck, man. But this is why your mind is attacked. Because your mind is a tool. And some of the George Carlin stuff I'm going to play. I'm going to play some George Carlin at some point. Either on my podcast, probably my podcast. But I might put some of it on YouTube. And he talks about the same thing. He's against organized religion. He thinks it's the root of all evil. And that's up for debate, obviously. But I do believe that he's not wrong about that to a certain extent. I do believe that organized religion is one of the things that we would be a lot better off without. And people can find their own spirituality. When someone already figures out their spirituality, just takes their model, and decides not to figure out their own, they're left with this big hole inside that they're trying to fucking fill. But if someone had to figure out their own spirituality, well then it wouldn't be so. They'd be able to fill that hole a hell of a lot faster than with Jesus. Or... Muhammad or uh, Krishna or whoever, fuck, Moses, whoever you want to say, Yahweh, uh, Jehovah, whoever the fuck, any of the deities, it doesn't matter. Your spirituality is within you. It's not outside of you. It's not in some church establishment that doesn't pay any fucking taxes that tells you that it's a sin to vote for different political fucking parties or candidates. And that's the thing. Go look at the Republicans in the United States. I got nothing against Republicans or Democrats or, or or anything. Okay, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm unbiased. I'm not biased for anybody. And I'm completely unbiased when it comes to politics, especially in the United States because I'm Canadian. But even in my own country, I do not fucking vote. I've taken on another thing from George Carlin I've taken on is the fact that he says, if you vote, you got no right to complain because if you vote in some motherfucker that fucking fucks up your fucking country or state or town and then you're gonna or yeah fucks the shit up well you voted him in and then he did those things so you're responsible so you have no right to complain whereas i didn't vote that day i don't want these fuckers in office therefore i can complain until i'm fucking blue in the face because they say well you voted him in so you can't complain motherfucker that's how court will work that's how a courtroom will work like sir did you do this yes i did this act but I don't like that I did it. Well, it doesn't matter that you don't like you did it. You still got to go to fucking jail because you did the fucking act. What's well, that clear cut? If you're voting for somebody and they fuck up, well, you got no right to complain because you voted them in there. So, but anyways, I'm off the topic. Sigil magic. The reason it works, or well, this is something we're supposed to talk about, but the astral being, the astral shit I'm talking about, when I was talking about uh, concentration, it's something you need, you need to be able to concentrate to do magic. It's one of the single best things you can do for your mind for yourself for your body for your health for your, for for your magic for everything because if you are trying to do sigil magic yet you're having a million fucking thoughts a day and you you're just going on impulse 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 impulses everywhere well you're gonna have a hell of a time not only that is you know, how can you stop your negative self-talk if you can't stop anything in your mind the reason you practice this concentration shit is so that when you start to reject, banish, and deny all the negative thoughts as if they're offers. Because what you think about, you bring about. What you think about gives energy to the shit on the astral. And therefore, what happens in the astral, if it's not here in the physical, it filters down. 
So like when you wake up in a new day, it's like, okay, I'm not going to be broke today. Get enough energy to the fact that you're going to have lots of money today and that's going to filter down to you. But if you wake up the same as every day, it's like, oh, another day that you want to make out, nothing in there, okay? So you just created that loop and then, oh, there's no money, I'm never going to have money. Well, then you're creating this fucking loop. You're blank slate every day. I mean, you have incoming shit, karma, whatever you want to call it, from previous and that's another reason for the six to 12 months off but you know what i mean at some point you become this blank slate that you can start talking things into existence once you start seeing your manifestations happen if you kept good notes you can kind of judge a timeline to where you're starting to be a blank slate and how long things take to come and whatever you want but the reason this is a shortcut is simply it's the same reason i put my statements of intent intense my oh, fuck they call that when you do candle magic you put your fucking your paper underneath your candle what the fuck do they call that petition you put, you're supposed to put your petition under the table under the candle on the thing and you leave a candle lit so you know the watchers whoever can see it but i say fuck that i because then you gotta burn that after right i simply write everything down on my candle i write my whole fucking spell Whatever I want. I am grateful that it had rain today. I was enjoy I was able to go and get the supplies I need to do my spell and receive no don't do that. But I'm grateful that I received five thousand dollars and I received it once all my bills were already paid, so I didn't have to spend it on bills because set point and shit like that is something that comes into play, but I'll talk about that later a different day. Point is, why this candle magic, the way I do it, work better? Well, at least for me. Because I didn't have much luck when I started doing the petitions I knew that I said, well, if you can put a sigil on a candle, and then the sigil burns away, well, no wonder that works, because you're burning away your representation. So the sigil means something. It means I have $5,000. Wow, that sigil's on that candle. You don't have that $5,000. And once you, if you put enough energy into it, and it's in the astral now. Well, once that candle burns down, the sigil is gone. So it's like having your spell on a time on a fuse. And so the watchers or whoever, they we're using the elements with a candle. So the wax turning into water is like from earth to water. And then the fire at the top is what's causing that. And you need air for the fire. But we also have our incense stick. But all the elements are present within a candle. And that's why we use it. But, so whatever, using the elements, it's like a sympathetic magic. Technically, that's a representation of what you want. So you get rid of it so it can come to you. So I, I don't even do that now, though. I mean, I will. When I make sigils, I will put them on the candles. But for the most part, I simply write out my whole statement, my whole petition on my candle. I let that bitch burn. And it normally, it comes to me. It's coming pretty fast now. So smaller manifestations are like, same day to like two days later max bigger ones for money are like a week four days i've had some things happen as long as two weeks but that's still pretty good turnaround you know what i mean so and it does it is it because i put so much energy into the fact that i believe in magic that i believe this way works probably i probably created my own programming that candle magic works therefore i created my own faith my own belief system that my candle magic works every single time and therefore it's going to work every single time so that's just another way you can boost your magic you can do magic sigils like i did i made sigils for me to be able to manifest things using candles using my mind i wrote that down on candles i made sigils and stared at them and came and at point of orgasm stared at them and then burnt those cocksuckers and i activated a couple other different ways that i went through my early episodes but i did all that it's i explained this earlier on too saying it's like you can actually you know like in the movies when you get a genie it says can't wish for more wishes well this is the way to do that to me this is my equivalent of that it's probably not the best metaphor but it's how i explain it it's wishing for more wishes it's doing magic to get your magic to work better and faster because people have to wait around for the magic right well i don't have to anymore it took time to get that in but i i did a candle every day non-stop my devotion the money i spent on candles and incense alone is, is ridiculous but it's a sacrifice right 
and the devotion and having to make sure I can't go to sleep until I fucking write on at least one fucking candle. To have a candle going in your house at all times. Now, I don't like saying that because I don't want people to cause fires, but if you're able to leave a white candle, period, just going in your house all the time, it's going to fucking boost your magic. Like, incredible. And you're doing, if you're doing your rituals, plus having a candle lit almost all the time, you're going to manifest so fast. You're going to change your mind so fast. I don't know why these things work, but they do. But this is the reason why ritual magic is the shortcut. It's because you're simply taking the guts, the the raw reason magic works, period. And it's simply that if there's something you want, you need to put enough energy on it so it goes to the first filter, which is the astral plane. Well, I guess the first filter would be your conscious mind stopping it from getting into your subconscious mind. And then your subconscious putting it onto the astral plane. So those are the two filters you got to get by. But if you can put enough energy into something that it gets onto the astral plane, well, then it'll filter down to you. Simple as that. And any representation you use to do that, you probably need to get rid of. But anyway, so... That's what I wanted to go into about that. I'm sure I have a lot more to say about that, but I think I'm going to get to the other shit. And uh, I'll probably play my other video there where I talk about my wife's stuff there after this. And so, yeah, it might be the last video. So you may not have to actually watch it if you don't want to. But anyways, hope you enjoyed this explanation. And I'm going to be back on hopefully today, either on the podcast or on another video. But it's going to have George Carling's uh, more serious stuff where he talks about the mind being important, where he talks about why religion isn't necessarily a good institution and different things like that. And I really want people to put it together and add it to what's going on today. Anyways, I think I've already said that, so I'm going to say it again. All right. What's going on, everybody? Yo, it is. So, put on a podcast shortly. It's going to be an actual podcast, not just my shit my last YouTube videos because I got quite a few I could just throw on there but with the reno I did the living room computer's not set up and generally I could just throw the videos from the one from my phone I went to the speaker and let it play it's pretty simple actually but I'm not using that so you can't do that from your phone but anyways what am I talking about this um, I don't know if I'm going to do it here on the video or not but I'm going to be doing some George Carling shit. I'm playing some George Carling shit. And I uh, want y'all to listen to it. Some of it's going to be his stand-up comedy. Some of it's going to be his more serious stuff. Him speaking in interviews or on a late night with Bill Maher or something like that. I watch much TV. That was on HBO. So if you think it's some polarizing shit on purpose by the left, well, you might be right. It might have been acted and scripted but I don't think I think they put George Carling on there because his opinions of religion and politics and all that are so clear that they don't need to pay an actor to go in his stead to go out there and diss the establishment and that's what they're trying to do so before people say well you know he's a comedian he's saying this shit for money well that's true but he's also a writer who believes in the things he says. So this is going to be the reason for what I put on here and uh, the George Carling stuff. I'm going to play some of the same stuff I played before about the germs and him swimming and shit, which strengthens his immune system. I'm going to play a lot of different things that I want people to put in perspective of today, of COVID, of taking your rights and freedoms away with this whole mass bullshit, shit getting out of hand with the children in the schools. I want you to put it in context today. Keep in mind that most of the stuff I'm going to show you is from the early 2000s or even as early as the late 1990s. Way before any of this shit. Way before people had fucking phones or cameras on it. So, people had phones. Some of them had cameras in the 2000s, right? We had camera phones in 2000s, early 2000s. I had a few. Not like in the year 2000, but like in like 2008, 2009, when I graduated high school. When... Yeah, I graduated in 2005, actually. So, that's like a couple years to college. So, yeah, we definitely had camera phones then. The point I'm trying to get at is you need to listen to the words he's saying and put it into context. And I'm playing this to help people because I think we're coming to a point where things are going to start happening at a fast pace and we're not going to be able to do anything about it. 
if we don't start actually standing up and saying, you know, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. And um, except for Berlin, there hasn't been any protests against this. And it's pretty shitty. And, you know, I'm not pointing the finger or judging because I didn't get out there and start organizing and whatever either. So who am I to fucking tell everybody else that they're fucking up? I'm also fucking up. And we need to stop fucking up. So, yeah, listen to some George and let's figure out a way to stop fucking up together. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what the fuck is going on? This is Corey LeBlanc, Ceremonial Witch. Woke up. It's too fucking early for anything, really. But, you know, it is what it is. There's some cup of coppers. Fuck you, coppers. No, I'm just kidding. Well, it doesn't know. Um, it's pretty early this morning right now. It's 8.30 for me, but, like... Shit, man, I did not want to wake up. Rough night last night, rough sleep. But, um, uh, what did we do last night? Oh, yeah, last night we had baseball out of town, come back into town, driving in the dark. Not bad, it was all right. We had a good time, but, um, I've been putting out the videos lately. I'm not gonna lie, I've been having a hard time. And, like, you could probably tell my last few videos, I made it very clear. Like, I, I the one video I said, I got a rule that I'm not supposed to record when I feel like this, when I am um, in down or upset or angry moods. And every video, maybe my last, I don't know, three or four, I've been, you know, way below the norm for quality or fucking quantity or anything. So. I'm going to be honest, I'm not going to be around the bush, I'm not going to pretend like, you know, I'm becoming some enlightened being and my practice got bigger or some shit like that. I've been fucking the dog and I've been fucking having a hard time at it. Simple as that. Um, why? Well, whenever you realize that I was going through this transformation and I thought everything was going good, you know, I just... Okay, I keep off and on manifesting time off. I was working a job that I didn't really mind. I'm working a job I don't really mind. Money's been, you know, not tight at all. This COVID shit's been going on, but you know, I've gotten, you know, my subscribers are increasing, I guess, a little bit. It's not really something I put much value into, but the point is I thought all was well. And then I come to find out that my wife has been, you know, miserable is not the right word, but not fucking happy for the last little bit to the point where she you know was debating on seeing another guy you know had I not got involved or you know thank God for my intuition knowing but if I hadn't uh, you know grabbed her phone that day who knows maybe it would eventually progress maybe she would have kept it under wrap for a few months and then you know the longer you the longer you do something you know whatever it is like because initially to her she said it's bad to like she she knows better than to cheat on me she's got more respect for me than that like she would straight up leave me before she would just straight up cheat on me so you know but that being said a couple months of her talking with that guy talking about you know let's say they start talking about well, what positions you like and you know what's this and what's that and then like, one of them gets drinks in them and they call the other one you know what i mean so god forbid thank god none of that happened but the point is after a certain amount of time, anything could happen. And I'm thankful every day that that's not what happened, you know, that between my intuition and my wife's good sense to not, you know, degrade me in our relationship, to just throw it all away on, you know, a fling that might not even be worth it, you know, some guy talking game. Well, I'm very grateful. But nonetheless, like, she was ready to... She was exploring those options whereas before guys would hit on her or whatever talk to her and you know she wouldn't say anything wouldn't do anything just delete 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 you know if she's having issues with me she's talking about her friends some guy tried some line like that she was just like no i'm sorry i'm happily married you know whereas this time it got through so that's hard for me because i thought things were going good and it turns out that i you know she still respects me enough to not i have not done anything but I left her alone, you know? I left her by herself in this marriage to 
you're cooking, you're cleaning, the chores, deal with the kids, you know. To deal with all this shit while I focus on my transformation, first and foremost, and then put her on the back burner, you know. And it's just, it's so wrong. It's so fucking wrong that I don't even know how to put it into words. So, I'm having a hard time recording because as much as I love recording... And, you know, sometimes I think I need to record, and that's probably why I'm so angry some days, because I'm not releasing anything. I don't feel right doing the same things I was doing when I left my wife by herself, you know? And, I mean, it took a while. Like, she's telling me, like, she was been unhappy. Like, obviously not the entire time, but she's like, it's been probably somewhere between two to three years, you know? Like, probably a year after she we had Sienna, she's been not happy off and on, and then towards this and it just got worse right and she, and she would she would legit tell me I'm not happy I'm not happy I'm not happy I'm not happy no I didn't go I wasn't, I wasn't going to bed with her anymore the only time I would it would be when I wanted to fuck um, you know I was doing a whole lot of wrong by her and you know my transformation was working great I'm manifesting what I want basically I was trying to figure out what I actually want like what my purpose may be or what I could turn into maybe a business but before I do just decide I want to turn something into a business I really want to know what the fuck I want to do with my life like what should I focus on and not just say okay I can do that I can see myself doing that I don't want to settle for shit so but the fact that I left her alone is just it's killing me inside you know I mean the fact that she's talking about it's hot was speaking with another man period fucking kills me inside a bit but you know, it is what it is. There's not much I can do about that now. I, and all I can do is thank God that she never fucking took it further and that she actually does respect me enough and showed me the messages. And, you know, as soon as I agreed to work on this with her, she, you know, told Buddy, you know, I'm sorry, but I didn't mean to lead you on, but I got to work on this with my husband. And But <clears throat> just goes to show you that I thought I had things figured out. I thought I was in control of my reality, right? You know, manifesting what I want to happen. And my financial game is pretty good. I mean, it's not, it's not clear, not clear, crystal clear that I know what's coming in and coming out and I'm just manifesting as a need. I mean, there's surprise that happens, but financial and the health and like the house and the bills and all this have been pretty solid. But my, my marriage was fucking rocky as fucking, I had no idea. As if I had like a glamour spell put on me that I had no idea that she was unhappy. That or I just didn't care. I just wanted to focus on what I wanted to focus on and I didn't give a fuck about her. I just fight it in whatever ways, you know? And it's just it's so wrong. I feel so bad for what I did to her. So if you're wondering why I'm not putting on much content, well, between the fact that I'm upset, I'm angry, I'm sad, and because this is what made me not to kind of start losing my marriage. This is why I'm not putting out content. And I can only see it, you know, decreasing and not increasing anytime soon. Unfortunately, but, you know, it is what it is. Not much you can do about that.